Greetings, my name is Jacob Lopez and my research partner is Adamo Baro. Our mentor is Professor Daiho Kang, PhD, and our major is Environmental Controls Technology. I would like to give credit to Cathal O'Toole, Matthew Quinones, and Shireen Moore for collaborating in previous research. The title of our project is Preventing Transmission of COVID-19 in HVAC Systems, Implementation of HVAC Design Upgrade. And now my partner Adamo Baro will introduce the research. Hello everyone. As an introduction, as schools, government buildings, and commercial facilities of all sorts were shut down due to last year COVID-19 pandemic, the urgency to focus on indoor air quality has been a priority to communities of all respect. In order for our research to be successfully in finding mitigation strategy for SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, we first have to address the nature of how the virus may transmit through the air in public indoor spaces. There was an initial thought that the spray and circulation of, the, of this airborne pathogen could be potentially due to air conditioning duct system. So our main focus was to advance our knowledge on HVAC system by researching proven engineering method and guide, guidance. In our previous project, we researched how COVID-19 can possibly flow through the ambient air inside of restaurant, office spaces, and locomotive train cabins. In a research article titled, Evidence for Probable Aerosol Transmission of SARS-CoV-2 in Poorly Ventilated Restaurant by corresponding author Ming King, we learned that computational fluid dynamic simulation software was used to predict how viral particulates disperse and travel through the air. Here is an image of computational fluid dynamics. Here on figure one shows the computational fluid dynamics study on airflow in a restaurant. And figure two shows computational fluid dynamics, which is basically tracing the image of the gases. Understanding of aerosol transmission of COVID-19 in indoor environments. In the case with the poorly ventilated restaurant, the computational fluid dynamic data on the ventilation rate was found to be between 1.58 CFM and 2.2 CFM of ventilation per person. According to the ASHRAE, acceptable in the ventilation per person should be 15 CFM. Results from this study concluded that reasons for virus transmission in poor ventilation and hard inadequate fresh air exchange approaches to mitigation. In order to find, to find out how improved air diffusion in indoor spaces, we continued to study research article and paper which has led to learning about the proven engineering methods and applications that are currently being used to mitigate the transmission of the virus in the supply air and indoor air. These engineering methods include particle solution, the practical solution for source control and operational control measures that can be applied. Source control, ultraviolet UVC, the band of electromagnetic radiation, which is UV light, can be classified into four wavelengths, UVA, UVB, UVC, and the UV vacuum. It has been found to show that wavelengths 100 through 200 nanometers are germicidal. In the research paper titled Ultraviolet Germicidal Irradiation Handbook, UVGI for Air and Surface Disinfection by Willady Klawalski, it has been found that at wavelength 253.7 nanometers, which falls under the UVC spectrum, Changes occur in the structure of DNA and RNA, which results in the inactivation of RNA viruses. Here is an image of various MERV-rated filters, uh, 
it's basically used as a source control. Various filter ratings, you can compare the filter's performance according to different criteria. And as you can see, MERV 13 can also take and also filter virus carriers. Source control, minimum efficiency rated value, MERV 13 filters. According to research, SARS-CoV-2 virus is one it is 0 0.1 microns, but one micron or larger when trapped in a respiratory droplet nucleus. Higher rated MERV filter are more efficient in capturing small particles. Research suggests MERV 13 filter is the least resistant to airflow, 85% efficiency in capturing COVID-19 particulates at one to three microns range. Here we have source control strategies. Figure four shows the UBC lamp fixtures installed upstream and downstream the cooling coils, which disinfects the airstreams and the coils, cooling coils. And here we have figure five, which shows the MERV 13 air filter, which can be used to improve the air quality of school buses and mass transit vehicles. Engineering guidelines, source control. Research has shown that UVC germicidal irradiation lamps inactivate 99% of virus and minimum efficiency reporting value MERV 13 rated filter were 85% efficient at capturing COVID-19 particles that range from one to three micron meters in size. Operational control, displacement ventilation ex extract contaminated air at ceiling high by creating a negative pressure vacuum. When analyzing and comparing zone air distribution effectiveness, research has shown that displacement ventilation performed 1.3 times better at improving air quality than with just using mixed air ventilation. Here's an image of ventilation displacement, which shows how the air moves in a classroom setting. UV lamp performance efficiency. As we continued our research project, we focused on assessing the effectiveness of induct ultraviolet UVC lamp irradiation and ideal installation arrays according to the latest research and mechanical engineering guidelines. Figure 6 shows the lamp array configurations. Modeling methods. Computational fluid dynamics simulations tests have been used as one of the major tools for modeling the effectiveness of ultraviolet germicidal irradiation. In this research, the discrete ordinances method was used to model the irradiation field of UVGI systems. In order to test the best U ultraviolet lamp array configuration, Four identical UV lamps were distributed evenly in four different arrangements. They were arranged in a vertical, horizontal, and 30 degree diagonally in a counterclockwise array inside of the ventilation duct that measured 2 feet wide, 2 feet high, and 25.6 feet in length. The pathogen containing particles were injected at the supply inlet, which would be used as the experimental viral sample. This is how the dispersion of the particulates can be monitored when interacting with air flow tur turbulences. Figure 7 shows the UV radiation control profiles at mid plane for all cases. UV lamp performance efficiency. It is important to note that lamp array position plays an important factor in UV performance. Different lamp array configurations have shown unique results for UV distribution doses. UV lamp performance efficiency. In case one clearly demonstrates the most even UVC dose distribution. Case two was similar to the case one except the irradiation field was a bit smaller. In case three, the lamp configuration shows a non-uniform irradiation distribution. And case four, the distribution is much narrower compared to the other lamp arrangements. UVC lamp performance conclusions. UVC irradiation works best when pathogens reach proximity of the radial distance of lamp surfaces. 
In order to achieve a higher UV dosage, the particles in the duct's airstream should follow a contour path close to the UV lamp surface. Facilities professionals can utilize UVC treatments to greatly reduce concentrations of pathogens. Discussions Upgrading filters to higher efficiency ratings can cause pressure drops in the duct, causing a decrease in airflow velocities. In order to make up for this pressure drop, fan speeds must improve, causing energy consumptions to increase. In the HVAC industry, there are always concerns about energy savings as engineers implement methods to improve indoor air quality. As improvements like filter upgrades and UV lamps are applied, further research on proper delivery of constant airflow must be accurately be balanced in order to meet indoor design conditions. As research continues to progress, sensors and innovative devices can be studied to help create energy savings through physics while upholding the latest standards for indoor air quality. These are our references, and I would like to thank uh, City Tech University, New York City College of Technology for giving us the opportunity to do this research project. And Baro, do you have any closing statements? Oh, yes, thank you all the professors. Thank you for our, to our schoolmates and especially thank you for Professor King for his help. Thank you guys for this wonderful CUNY yeah. Research Scholars program opportunity of 2021. And you guys take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.